Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Can't you see she's spitting nerdy? Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Hey guys, you guys know that I've been going to physical therapy. I actually just finished my final session last week, so I'm kind of on my own now. But I was going to fix some major, or at least in my opinion, major imbalances in my body. And when I told you guys what was wrong with my body and everything that I was trying to fix, I got a ton of requests to share the different exercises that I'm going through in order to fix this, because I guess a lot of you are experiencing the same thing. So I said I would do a dedicated video on this, and here it is. First and foremost, I wanna give the disclaimer that these exercises or programs specifically for me and my body and my body's issues by my physical therapist that I was seeing in person. So even if you have issues that kind of sound similar or are presenting similarly, they might have a different cause. And so these exercises might not help you at all. Some of them are much more general. Like for example, one of the exercises that has made the most difference for me is something that actually could probably help anyone who's trying to develop the booty. Because before I went to physical therapy, my left glute just like it was asleep, it would not activate, and through my physical therapy, I was able to actually like make the connection to my left glute, so now it's like slowly waking up. But anyway, I digress. These exercises have helped me enormously. Like when I first started going to physical therapy, if I tried to squat my body weight for like eight reps, by the time I was on the eighth rep, my form would completely break down. And now when I'm squat, I'm able to lift more and maintain good form. So I have made tremendous progress. I'm still really working on it and I still have to keep doing these exercises because I can still feel the imbalances. But as far as actually being able to lift goes, it's made a world of difference. So first I'm gonna go through what actually was wrong with my body and the imbalances that I have so that you know how these exercises apply and then I'll show you the exercise. So going into physical therapy, I had two major imbalances that I wanted to fix. First was that my hips felt extremely uneven and second was that my spine is actually slightly curved. Not enough to be like diagnosed with scoliosis but I have very slight scoliosis in my spine which made my entire back feel uneven. So this problem has actually gotten better so it's a little bit less noticeable but with my hips it was very clear that one was much higher than the other just when I was standing still on a flat surface. And so this is causing all sorts of imbalances in my lower body, mainly in my glutes. Not to like show you my butt and get all weird, but like this is all about anatomy, so don't be creepy. There was and still is a noticeable difference in the size between my right glute and my left glute. Like my right glute is so much more developed and my left one is just like lagging behind and just it's not having it. And so I first noticed this issue manifesting when I was squatting. So I would squat down and then when I would come up out of the squat, my hips would just like shift over to the side like that. So essentially what my physical therapist determined is happening is that if, if these are my pelvic bones, so my pelvis is like here, right? It like goes there. These are the bones. One side is rotated like this and the other side is rotated like this. I don't know if that was clear. So this is my pelvis. One side is like rotated forward and one side is rotated backward. And so that is essentially what was causing one leg to seem longer than the other, which was resulting in my glutes not developing evenly. And so my left glute has been apparently severely under activating in like all my exercises and now it's really hard for me to activate my left glute. Whenever I do any sort of movement that involves the glutes, I can feel my right glute engage and it's there and like I know where it is and I feel it working. My left glute is just, it's just there, but it's not participating. It's not being a team player. So that's essentially the issues with my lower body. And then with my upper body, I have that slight curve in my spine, which may be caused by my pelvis being rotated, or it may be the cause of like me developing weird recruitment patterns that cause my pelvis to rotate. We're not really sure what the origin of the issue is, but essentially my spine is slightly curvy. So hopefully you can see this. So in the camera, it looks like my spine curves slightly this way and it's in my lower back. And that has actually caused my lower back to develop imbalances. Like one side of my back is a lot more developed than the other in the lower part. And the same with my core. So when I do like the, the cobra pose, is that the one where you're on the ground and you like push yourself up like that, that whatever pose that is? I feel it so much more in this side of my back. Like this side of my back feels like meteor. I don't really know how to describe it, but it feels like there's more development here than on this side. And then you can really clearly see the difference in my obliques in actually a few of my videos as well as some of my Instagram workout videos. I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell really clearly that this side looks much more indented. And then when I reach up, I actually reach crooked. Like I reach that way if I'm standing straight, like my whole body just goes like bloop. So those are all of my imbalances and all the things that I've been trying to fix. If any of those seem like they apply to you, then maybe some of these exercises could help. But I do highly recommend like going to an actual specialist, like go to a physical therapist and get them to look at your body and evaluate it. Cause you could have like the same imbalances, but they could have a completely different root cause. Yeah. Okay. So 
here are the exercises. Okay, so the first one that I'm gonna do is for pelvic realignment. For this you need something like a foam roller or anything thinner that is going to be very inflexible. So what you do is you take it and you put it in between your legs like so, so that one leg is on top and one leg is on the bottom. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna push as hard as you can that way with your top foot and then pull as hard as you can this way with your bottom leg. And what that should do is activate your glute for your top leg and your hip flexor for your bottom leg. You do the movement and hold it for five to 10 seconds and push as hard as you can. Like that. And so what this is doing essentially is pulling one side of the pelvis up and tilting the other side down. I usually do that five times and hold it for eight seconds each. And then what you have to do is follow it with the following exercise. Take a yoga block or when I'm in the gym, I actually usually just use a foam roller because there are no yoga blocks in the gym, strangely. You stick it between your knees and then just squeeze your knees together as hard as possible. Then you hold that for five seconds and squeeze it's really hard. And then let go. And what that does is it kind of solidifies the pelvic realignment. So when I first started doing this, after I did the like cross leg exercise, when I would do the knee squeeze, my pelvic bones would like pop really bad and it kind of hurts sometimes. But that's just essentially the bones like popping back into realignment. So I'll do that for five seconds for five sets as well. Continuing on and fixing the lower body, the next thing that I like to do is some left glute activation so that in the rest of the movements, my left glute is activated and more engaged. So this first one I actually prefer doing with an exercise ball, but I don't have one here. So I will take my camera to the gym later and like discreetly film a few little clips to insert. You can also do it without a ball. You need a resistance band though. So that's gonna go just above your knees. I thought the ball is essentially just kickbacks. So since my left glute is the one I wanna activate, I'm just gonna kick my left leg back. And the reason this is so great for glute activation is because you can completely eliminate the hamstring. And my problem is that in a lot of exercises that use the glutes a lot, my hamstrings tend to take over. When you're in this position and your leg is completely flexed this way, you can't curl your hamstring anymore. So it just completely takes it out of the movement and it really isolates the glute. So on my mobility days, I'll do 30 second holds for a total of two minutes and I'm working on getting my way up to doing a like full one minute hold and just doing that twice. Ideally, I'll be able to work my way up to a full two minute hold without releasing at all. And then on the days when I lift, when I have any sort of glute focused exercise, like if I'm doing an RDL or hip thrusts or sometimes even squats, right before I do the movement, I'll just do little five second pulses just to get my glute activated and engaged again because it likes to fall asleep as soon as it can. And so that way when I go into the exercise, I feel my glute a lot more and I can like make that mind to muscle connection and really engage it. So this is essentially what it looks like on the ball. It just has my knees at a little bit of a higher position and I find this has a little bit better glute engagement, but honestly it doesn't really make that much of a difference as far as I can tell. Then I have one more glute activation exercise that's specifically for the abductors, AKA the side booty. And so it's essentially fire hydrants, but usually when you see people do fire hydrants, they lift their legs straight up and just go like that. And that is not the way my physical therapist told me I should be doing it to get to maximal glute activation. So I'm gonna show you apparently the real way to do fire hydrants. So just for some feedback, it's good to put something flat on your back and try to keep that flat as you do the movement so that your hips don't shift at all. And then essentially what you're gonna try to do is move your knee in all three planes. So it's gonna go out a little bit, back a little bit, and then rotate a little bit. It makes it so much harder and engages the glutes so much more. So you're kind of kicking back in a semicircle, and you just hold it right there. That one's a relatively new exercise for me, so I'm still working on getting the form down and stuff, but again, that should be two minutes total of a hold as long as you can do it in like 30 second intervals or one minute intervals or whatever. So after I get my left glute properly activated, I do cross bridges. So these are essentially bridges, but with one leg and you're activating like opposite sides of the body. So if you're using your right leg to do the bridge, you're gonna take your right arm and fold that across your chest and then take your left arm and really firmly plant it on the ground. And so you're gonna push through your right leg and your left like lat almost. So you're really engaging opposite sides of the body and taking like this side of the body or like these opposite sides of the body completely out of it. And so this isn't any sort of muscle building activity. It's really just to get the opposite sides of the body working together and like firing together. So I usually do like 10 second holds and I just alternate sides until I've done 60 seconds on each side. And it can be really easy to do this without actually properly activating your upper body. So really make sure you're like driving your arm into the ground. You can also put your arm down like that and you should feel it 
in this side of your upper body and really not much on this side. From here, I usually go into a few different plank variations. You'll remember that my core is uneven, so doing a plank hold will help even out my core. So I usually do two or three just like standard planks for one minute. Most people when you see them do planks, they look like this, which like looks kind of nice, right? But if you do this and you pay attention, you notice that you feel it a lot in your lower back and it's really not great for the abs. So instead what you want to do is you want to essentially like do a crunch and tuck your pelvis and that will engage like all of these muscles so much more rather than like if you do it the other way you kind of just feel it up here but if you tuck your pelvis under you feel it all the way through your abs that's my pro planking tip so i do the regular plank for two or three minutes in one minute intervals and then i have side planks and these will help even out your obliques as well as your abductors so this is banded so you want the band right around the top of your knee and then your bottom leg fold it back because you're going to plank off of your knee and then you're going to be on your elbow and then make sure your whole body is in alignment from your shoulder to your hips to your knees so you really kind of have to like push push your butt out a little bit to stay in alignment i found it really helpful to do these on those mats that like have the divisions in between them so i could lay like right along the line and make sure my whole body was aligned then you're going to lift your hips up as well as your leg you should really feel it here as well as in your oblique this one was actually really hard for me when i started and so what i'm doing now is i'm doing 30 second intervals on each side for a total of like one minute because i really can't do much more than that so that is the other side exactly the same just reverse okay i got one more plank for you but i gotta move you this technically isn't a plank but i lump it in with the planks because it's still a core hold it's essentially a plank for the lower back so you got to secure your feet under something and then i like to pick a foam roller because it's comfortable but you can probably do this on whatever and i put this so my pelvic bones like poke out right here and it's like about an inch behind that now what you're gonna do starting from the ground you just lift yourself up and hold yourself with your body in a straight line you'll really feel it in your back if having your hands straight out is too difficult you can put your hands back here because that reduces the leverage you know as you get better slowly move your arms farther out then i do this in one minute intervals for two minutes total next up we have another great booty activator slash booty evener outer you've probably seen this a million times on instagram and probably on youtube it's just crab walks so you need a band for this and you're gonna put it around your ankles so on one side of the room get into like a half squatted position and you're just gonna gonna crab walk make sure you maintain tension in the band the entire time so don't like go like that where the band just like kind of falls loosely around your feet. Make sure your feet stay far enough apart that you always have tension. And then what I like to do since it's my left glute that's having trouble keeping up is between every step, so here, I'll like try actively to squeeze my glute and then here, I'll try actively to squeeze my glute and make sure it just like stays engaged throughout the entire process. And I'll do that for my left glute going in both directions because I know my right glute is fine. It's working just fine. My left glute, no. No, it needs, it needs a little extra push. So usually when I do these, I'll have a four pound weight in my hand, but you can also do this without any weight. I don't have any weights here, so I'm gonna demonstrate without a weight. So I'll do 15 reps with the weight right out in front of me in this direction, and then I'll do 15 reps in this direction, and I'll take a little breather because my booty's exhausted. And then I put the weight up over my head and do another 15 reps this way and then 15 reps the other way as well. And the reason for putting the weight up over my head is that my physical therapist and I noticed like when I walk, I can feel the imbalances, but when I would walk with one arm over my head, it would like actually fix everything drastically. And so doing exercises with both my arms up over my head forces my core to be engaged properly. And so it helps me like stay even. So the next exercise I absolutely hate, mostly because it shows me that I'm not balanced out yet and I still have a lot of work to do. These are one leg planks on a ball. Again, I don't have a ball here. So here is some gym footage spliced in. Essentially, you rest your upper shoulders on a workout ball and get into a bridge position and then lift one leg off the ground. Now, if your glutes are engaging properly, like my right one, you should be able to balance like this for a while and you should really feel your glute engaging to help stabilize your body. If your glutes are like my left glute, you're gonna feel this entirely in your hamstrings and have zero balance whatsoever. The first time I did this, I was extremely blown away and frankly, extremely frustrated by how much it highlighted the insane difference between the level of activation in my glute. For the first few weeks, I could not for the life of me feel it in my left glute at all or stayed balanced for more than like three seconds. After I told my physical therapist this, that's when he recommended I do the like banded kickbacks that I did at the beginning in order to activate my glute better. So I usually try to make sure I do a few banded kickbacks right before I do this exercise as well, just to get my left glute like super engaged so that I can like try to make it work, but it's still, it, this one's still a struggle for me. Okay, I'm balancing you on my foam roller, so I really hope this doesn't go poorly. This next exercise requires a step and is designed to help balance out my obliques and my back. So if you feel like you have the same imbalances as me, 
feet, you're gonna take the leg that you put on top of the foam roller in the very first exercise and use that to be the one that you're pushing off of in this exercise. That one goes on the step and then the other one just hangs off to the side. And then the same hand that's on the step, you're gonna reach that up and then you're essentially just gonna do little hip dips. So with this one, you're really using your obliques to allow one hip to drop and then to crunch it all the way up. So for me, I'm doing a big crunch with my left side and also extending my hand on my right side to get my obliques on the right side to stretch. Because one of the problems that's arisen with the overdevelopment of my right side is the fact that it's a lot tighter. So I need to strengthen the crunching ability of my right side and loosen out my left side. Oh, and I do 15 reps three sets for the hip dips. Next we have a set of lunges and these are all designed to help my glutes stabilize and also help even them out. So I have three different variations that I'm gonna show you. All of these can be done with a weight in your hands. If I do it with weight, I usually use, I think it's an eight pound ball, but you can also use like four pounds or no weight cause that works too. So this first one is just a regular forward lunge, but then with a forward reach. So it looks like this, you lunge forward and reach forward at the same time. Where working on the imbalance that comes in is in the lunge itself. So my issue is that when I lunge forward, when my left leg is the one that goes forward, my right knee tends to cave in a little bit because my glutes aren't stabilizing and pulling my leg back out. So I do this in front of a mirror so that I can make sure my knee is staying stable as I reach forward. My right leg doesn't really have that problem as much, but it's still a really good thing to pay attention to. And another variation of this is just the forward lunge, but with a side twist. So if you lunge forward with your left leg, you're gonna twist to your left. And it's just another way to force your glute to help stabilize your body, especially if you have a weight in your hands, because then you're really throwing your center of balance off if the weight is traveling this way and you have to like correct with your body. So then on the other side, of course, you step forward with your right leg and turn to your right. Then the last lunge variation is a side lunge, also with a forward reach. Whether or not you have a weight in your hands, whatever, you just lunge to the side and reach down. And this one should really engage your glute on the way up as you push yourself out of the lunge. So when I do this, every time I go to the side, I kind of pause and I mentally focus on my glute and like really engaging it and squeezing it before I push myself back up. So with these lunges, if I want to go through all of the different variations, I do about 10 reps of each just with one set. If I just want to do one variation, I'll do 10 reps for three sets. So these last two things are more stretches than exercises, and they're both focusing on loosening up the tight side of my lower back. So with this one, you're just going to sit on something where your feet can just rest comfortably on the ground. Your knees are roughly at a 90 degree angle. The tight side of my back is the right side, so I'm going to lift my right arm over my shoulder and essentially just do that. Stretch out my back, do a little side bends. Then I make it a little bit more complicated by doing that and also twisting at the same time. And this is the opposite twist that my spine has in it. So theoretically, as I strengthen the muscles that twist me this way, it'll help untwist my spine. And so I do that 10 to 15 times for three sets. We have one final stretch for the lower back. This is essentially modified child's pose. So you're just gonna go into child's pose and then walk your arms all the way out to the side until you feel the stretch in your back. So it looks like this. I really like that one. I do it on my mobility and corrective exercise days as well as for my cool downs after I do any lifting. And I hold it for 30 seconds. I usually do one to three sets depending on the day, depending on what I'm working on, depending on how my body's feeling. And that's it. Those are all the exercises that I've been using over the last two months to help even out my body. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up because it really does support me and my channel and I really appreciate it. I hope that any of you who do have any imbalances might be able to get something out of this. Hopefully you find one or two things out of this that can really help correct your own imbalances. Making sure you're your body is properly mobile and functions the way it's supposed to and that all of your recruitment patterns are correct is so important in the short term for building muscle in order to burn body fat and also in the long term because you could be you know squatting improperly for like 10 years and it's probably not going to affect you if you're in your 20s but by the time you're 50 you're going to be walking crooked and things are just gonna not be going well. That was one of the biggest reasons I wanted to go to physical therapy because I knew that if I continued to reinforce the recruitment patterns that I had due to the imbalances that by the time I was 50 I'd probably be walking like this a little bit and every my whole world would be crooked and things would just not be ideal and that wouldn't be a fun life to live if you don't want to go through knee and hip replacements if you want to be still squatting when you're 70 this stuff is so important in addition to all these exercises that I've gotten through physical therapy I've also been going through a lot of maps prime and maps prime pro from mind pump and both of those are mobility focused programs you can tell that you have some imbalances in your body but nothing that I talked about in this video you think would really help then I definitely recommend maps prime pro because that's literally what it's designed to do it's essentially a physical therapist without having to go to a physical therapist and pay them every week but anyway, it's like 4 p.m. and I haven't eaten breakfast yet. Hashtag intermittent fasting life. So I'm gonna go have some paleo pancakes 
and eggs and bacon, I think. That sounds pretty darn good. Please do share this video with all of your friends and your family and your workout buddies. Subscribe for more videos and hit that notification button so you don't miss any future videos and I will see you very soon. Bye.